Live from Snowman Jones's electric bungalow in Tahiti, I'm Snowman Jones, and this is 911 Wrestling Audio. Today we're going to be talking about the best superstars in the WWE. Well, technically, we're going to be starting with superstars whose name begin with B, moving through the alphabet. I'm going to be giving my unique opinion on each of them. But before we get started, I want to go ahead and take a moment, congratulate Eric Escobar, Eric Perez. Um, Eric, his wife, just gave birth to triplets. So the Escobar family in Puerto Rico, if you remember, he was uh, a great superstar in WWE and FCW for a while. But Eric's now going to be starting potentially his own wrestling organization as he has three sons. Uh, she just gave birth this week. So congratulations to Eric and Jeanette, Eric Escobar from the WWE. So going into our reviews, rankings, profiles, and discussion of WWE superstars, we're starting off with the B's as our last episode ended with the A's. And the first one up to date, that's Beth Phoenix. Now I've got a chance to, to see Beth Phoenix a few times in action. Uh, I got to talk with her once or twice in Florida Championship Wrestling. And she really, she and Natty Neidhart are both great individuals, very sweet ladies. It was interesting to me when uh, Natty Neidhart first broke into the WWE, they kept bringing Beth Phoenix down to Florida Championship Wrestling. They were working together, but one of the big fears for Beth and Natty Neidhart were that they looked too much alike. If you recall, when Natty Neidhart made her debut, they gave her some pink highlights in her hair, made her wear more pink because they didn't want her looking too much like Beth Phoenix. But both individuals, very stocky, very strong, very intelligent women, great athletes. I think they're great, uh, great additions to the WWE roster. Next up, alphabetically, we're going with the Big Show. Big Show, a seven foot one, four hundred plus pound superstar. He's a monster of a man. Very athletic, very creative. I don't think the WWE has done him justice. If you remember, in his WCW days. He debuted as the son of Andre the Giant. He debuted, he was at ringside in a Hulk Hogan match, ripped off his shirt, threw it at Hulk. Everybody speculated the son of Andre was going to attack Hulk Hogan. Uh, they gave him a huge push in WCW. He was choke slamming men, kind of that Goldberg push where he just beat everyone. He was incredibly athletic, a lot thinner at the time. If I recall correctly, I saw him do a clothesline diving over the top rope to the to the ringside. I saw him do a drop kick over the top of the ring. I saw him, well, excuse me, I heard a rumor that at house shows he was perfecting a moonsaw, which is hard to believe that the Big Show could ever do that. Big Show's obviously put on a lot of weight since that era in the mid-90s. And I don't know, I, I always liked his name being The Giant. Leave a comment below in our YouTube feed because I would be curious to hear what other people have to say about his name being The Big Show. It's, it's, it's hardly even a wrestling name. I don't get it. And I just don't think that the WWE has done him justice. It seems like he's not a serious contender for a major title because on any given occasion, they'll have him job out whoever the, the current guy getting a put job out to whoever's getting a push. Then we have Booker T, King Booyah. Um, I greatly enjoyed Booker T in his Harlem Heat days. I liked him with his brother Stevie Ray. If you recall, Stevie and Booker T were, were, were some of the better paid superstars in WCW. Rumor was that he and Booker T were, or he and Stevie Ray were making $800,000 a year at WCW's heyday. He moved on to be the WCW champion, had that best of seven series with Chris Benoit. And that era, and I think that was under Vince Russo, he really did he did some of his best work. So as much as people hate Vince Russo, and it probably wasn't Vince's idea, that era really did benefit Booker T when he went into singles. I hated when the WWE used him as King Booker, King Booker, and had him with his fake accent. I think he does a good job as a ring announcer. He's entertaining and lively. Probably best past his best days, but certainly, I mean, we could see this guy in a ring 10 years from now. He's got a lot of endurance. He's been around since at least the early 80s. I remember him as GI Bro 
if you guys followed him in the uh, the indies, and then he brought back that gimmick under the misfits of action in WCW. He was a, a stereotypical black soldier as GI Bro. He was entertaining. He does a good job. Next up is Brodus Clay. I watched Brodus in his FCW days in Florida Championship Wrestling in my trips to Tampa. Brodus, he's got to be 6'4", 6'5", 6'6", pushing 400 pounds, a tremendous athlete. He's kind of got the flash funk gimmick. A lot of people, purists, wrestling purists, hate the gimmick. But frankly, I think he's doing okay with it. It's his way of making a name. And I think the WWE is smart enough to go ahead and... You know, just have him break out of that character within a year or two and establish himself as a monster. It's just hard. There's a lot of big guys, and it's hard for anyone to really believe in him. To me, he seems like a modern era's King Kong Bundy. He's big. He's athletic. He's got a lot of potential. If he keeps his nose clean, he'll go. He'll be around for a long time. I think behind the scenes, Brodus Clay has had a little bit of a reputation for being a thug. We'll see how he does. Then we got Camacho and Cameron. Neither of these two I, I know a ton about. Uh, I saw Cameron training a little bit. I don't recall seeing Camacho training, so I don't want to go into too much detail on these two individuals, but they're the first two in the C's as we're going through alphabetically. Next up, alphabetically, as we're going through the WWE superstars, and I'm giving you Snowman Jones's impression of each of these, and if you don't like what I have to say, feel free to leave a comment. We'll address it in a future episode. But Chris Jericho, this guy's interesting. I remember watching him in WCW. I remember him watching him in the ECW days. Lionheart Chris Jericho. Frankly, I never cared for him much. I never thought he was in great physical condition. I never thought he was very interesting to watch. I know a lot of people love Chris Jericho. I'm not particularly a fan. He, he's interesting. The whole Y2J thing, I thought the WWE brought him in in 2000 in a very interesting way. They played him up well. He's got his band. He's a media icon. I like seeing him on things like Dancing with the Stars and commentary on totally 80s TV shows. I'm not a huge fan of the ring. And the guy can cut a great promo. One of my favorite Chris Jericho promos, him and Shawn Michaels got together in Canada. Everybody was cheering for the Canadian Chris Jericho and booing Shawn Michaels. This was post the screwed Bret Hart era where everyone in Canada hated Shawn Michaels. It was an amazing promo because when they came out, fans were cheering for Jericho, booing Shawn, had a lot of resentment. By the end of the promo, because Chris Jericho started talking trash about Canada and how he moved away from Canada, and Shawn Michaels started to defend Canada... By the end of the promo, the fans were cheering Shawn Michaels and booing Chris Jericho. It was just amazing to see 20,000 people pissed off at Chris Jericho that five minutes earlier loved him. So uh, I, he's got a, a great bit of talent. I think he's getting in great shape. He's, he's talented. He's athletic. He's interesting. Just not my favorite. I think, what is he, 5'9"? He's just, just a small guy, and I have a hard time believing him against a Brock Lesnar or The Rock or someone who's just bigger. I don't see him as a WWE champion, uh, type, that, that level individual. They advertise him at six foot, but I stood next to the guy. I'm 6'2", six 6'3". Six He's at least a half foot shorter than me, if not more. We have Christian. Christian who grew up as Christian and Edge in the WWE, went over to TNA as Christian Cage, and I like them... Uh, adding a last name. I know a little bit about adding a last name. In the 90s, I was known as Snowman, and by 2010, I was Snowman Motherkin Jones. So I like them adding the cage to his last name. I think the guy's got a lot of talent. Again, he's not huge, but there's something about Christian that's very compelling. He's 6'1, 212 from Ontario. Uh, signature move is the kill switch. Former ECW champion, Intercontinental champion, World Tag Team champion. He's held the Hardcore and Lightweight Championship belts. He's done it all. And frankly, I thought he was better in TNA, Impact Wrestling, where this guy could really shine and stand out. In the WWE, it's just too big of a pool of people. And I don't know, I just, I just don't see him as a major, major contender in the WWE as much as I do in TNA where it's a little bit smaller of a, uh, a pond. He's a bigger fish there. Then from there, 
Alphabetically, we've already covered CM Punk as the WWE champion, ch champion so we're going to skip over him, go straight to Cody Rhodes. Cody, you know, frankly, this guy doesn't look anything like his dad, like in terms of his physique. In the face, he looks a lot like his dad. You can see the chin structure of his mom if you've ever met his mom. Uh, Cody looks a lot like his mom in the face, but you can definitely see his dad's influences as well. But Cody, he's a consummate professional. He'll be around the WWE for a long time. He knows the wrestling industry. He's not real big. He's incredibly talented. I don't know. I, I can see him maybe in a tag team. He's no, no Dustin Rhodes. He's no Dusty Rhodes. But give him five years and I think he'll develop. If he's got any of the creativity of Dusty and Dustin, he's going to do fine. WWE's been pushing him hard, so you can't hardly question the guy. Kurt Hawkins, um, if you get a chance, check out some of our YouTube videos of Kurt Hawkins in Florida Championship Wrestling, Jimmy Mack, a referee from All Stars Wrestling, and around the Central Florida area, and I gave Kurt Hawkins a lot of harassment. He's a talented guy, he's a nice guy, I've seen him around Tampa a few times, shopping at the dollar store when he was, when he was still a developmental talent. Nice guy, I wish him the best. I'm not a huge fan of some of his work, but but he's got a lot of talent. I think he'll develop there. I just don't see this guy as anywhere near the main event for now. Same thing with Damian Sandow. They're pushing him hard right now. He's very fortunate to be the new face, coming out in his bathrobe and his, his white towel wrapped around him. I, I just haven't seen it develop. Daniel Bryan. I have a hard time talking about this guy without saying Brian Danielson. In fact, he is Brian Danielson, and I'll... I'll probably never accept him as Daniel Bryan. Just like I never accepted the big show being called the big show. He's still the giant to me. He's still Paul White to me. But Daniel Bryan's got a lot of talent. I personally have never had a chance to sit down or talk with Daniel Bryan. But I'm a huge fan of his work. I've been watching him for years. It's great to see the guy get a, a push. And then we have Darren Young. Darren Young is an interesting individual. I first saw Darren at Florida Championship Wrestling when he was training with the WWE, and it was amazing at the time, and it really wasn't that long ago, it was two or three years ago he was training. The world, at least the people that were watching him, could not get over the fact, particularly when he had his short hair, he had a John Cena haircut, how much he looked like John Cena. I'm surprised that that hasn't gotten further in terms of gimmicks and storylines or whatever, but the guy has a face structure very much like John Cena. I remember the crowd um, really being into that. David Otunga, I also was present for his wrestling debut. He gave an interview in Florida Championship Wrestling. He is, at least his, his WWE developmental contract debut. He's an interesting individual. He's incredibly smart, incredibly strong. He got the connections. He's got a good look. He's gonna do. He's gonna do fine in the WWE. I don't know if we'll see him in ten years, but he's got a few good years of WWE wrestling ahead of him. Then we have Dolph Ziggler. Dolph, uh, I just particularly remember frequent uh, him frequently frequenting the Hooters over by Dale Mabry in Tampa, Florida. Dolph, Dolph was a unique individual because the first time he got pulled up to the main roster in the WWE within a week. He got hit with a drug test and, and popped positive for steroids. I remember a lot of the guys at Florida Championship Wrestling and a lot of the spouses were pretty pissed at him because not too many people get that chance to get pulled up to the main roster. And as soon as he did, he popped positive. I don't know that that's his fault. There's a lot of guys doing a lot of different medication, we'll say, in the WWE. And I think he was just a victim of circumstance because... In my opinion, it seems like the Triple H's and John Cena's never get called for the for the tests, but the new guys seem to be the sacrificial lamb. WWE didn't hold it against him any. You know, they suspended him for 30 days. He was back, and they pulled him up to the main roster. So I really think it was one of those things where he's just the wrong guy at the wrong time. So in the D's, the final individual that we're going to be talking about today, Drew McIntyre. <laughs> Drew Galloway was his original name, and I I got to see him grow up in Florida Championship Wrestling. Obviously, he wrestled overseas. He has a great following. Um, fans really, really harassed him. There was a screw you, Drew chant 
and Florida Championship Wrestling's arena for a, a good year that this guy really, really interacted with, with the fans. He wasn't in nearly the physical shape to look at as he is now back in that era. He had a little bit of a tummy. He was a little bit heavy. Now he's just ripped. I don't know what he's done to drastically change that, but I'd say over the period of three months, he went from being a guy who was a big guy, who was a little bit heavy, to just being the Drew McIntyre that you know today. But Drew's got a lot of talent, actually a very nice guy. Um, had a chance to kind of interact with him a little bit, and I'd definitely give this guy the thumbs up. With that, I'm Snowman Jones. Check back later. We're going to be kicking off with Dwayne The Rock Johnson on our next episode. Check out Wrestling 911 Audio. Go to 911wrestling.com.